Hi everyone, uh, this is video 11 of my Studebaker truck build and uh, one of the things that I intended to do uh, um, was to uh, get rid of this uh, two barrel carburetor and because the truck is going to run on straight LPG no petrol so I thought I'll look around for a um, a proper LPG carburetor rather than using a, a petrol one um, and yeah I ended up finding one I uh, have been trying to bid on one of these on eBay for over a year and they've just been selling uh, higher than uh, a lot higher than I would have liked to have um, spent and I just got lucky on this one so I've ended up with a this gas carby it's a MCO 425 it um it sits on a, a throttle body here uh, I believe this may actually be the proper throttle body for this 425 but I can't be 100% sure because I've never seen one set up on anybody else's uh, motor before so I'm not sure uh, but regardless this this bolts to this throttle body um, and then that bolts to the um, the Ford Thermoquad base um, I need to get all the gaskets to go in between here and I've got to get two little screws or bolts to go into the back here to hold hold that down but that's pretty much what the setup will look like I had to do a couple of little things to it um, I needed to replace this thread in the top it had a, a thread with a very um, well, I had a shaft with a very coarse thread on it but it wouldn't it wouldn't suit the aftermarket air cleaners um, so yeah I had a a spare uh, threaded shaft from an air cleaner unit that I bought a long time ago and I just sort of cut that down so pop that in it's, of course it's now got the um, the four barrel intake manifold on it that came off the um, 79 Fairmont wagon which most of the parts on this truck have come from um, this was not the engine that did come out of that wagon there was a little bit of engine swapping and stuff like that I needed to get a reconditioned 302 put into another car so I ended up giving them that motor and then I ended up buying this one off eBay for $170 so that was a really good bargain because it came with everything all the water pump and the pulleys and everything was on it basically you know if I wired it up I could have turned the motor over so um, for $170 and the guy delivered it um, it was a bargain so that, that, that came off that, that came off the uh, 79 Fairmont wagon that I had but the motor was another motor that I bought off eBay um, I've had to take out a lot of the other little bits and pieces that would have went onto that two barrel so all these heat rise tubes for the automatic choke oh, just pull them out which is great um, they came out in one piece my one of my other cars my 76 Ford Fairmont Coupe um, for those of you that don't know exactly what I'm talking about if you know the movie Mad Max the um, the XB interceptor in that movie well I have the same model car but in original um, in original dress it um, is not a Mad Max replica, it's a, an original F Ford Fairmont Coupe um, and it does run a two barrel carburetor uh, I had these pipes um, break off at the bottoms on that, uh, that car where they go into the manifold and I've done a, a repair on them, I did a bloody good repair on them too um, and they, they work great but these ones are all intact so um, eventually when that motor 
comes out of the coop that will go into the Studebaker. This motor will go back onto eBay and get sold. And my original coupe motor, which is sitting here under this tarp, will get fully rebuilt and go back into the coupe. So it will be a matching numbers car once again. So yeah, a little bit of engine shuffling, but the, uh, the engine in the coupe was specifically built for LPG with the intention for it to go into this eventually. Um, I just didn't have the money at the time to rebuild that one and buy the motor for this. So rather than clock up more Ks on that original motor, I pulled that motor out, stored it away and put the um, new reconditioned motor into the coupe for now. Um, it'll be perfect. Um, you know, it'll it, it's it's running now. It's been in there for quite a, quite a number of years now. It's all running, and um, you know, never had a problem with it. Doesn't miss a beat. So I know when it goes in this, turn the key first time, it's going to start. There's no issues there. Um, this is the air cleaner that came off my Chevy before I got the. Um, the alloy uh, scoop for it. The old um, traditional scoops that you'd normally put on a uh, on a blown motor. Um, oval front, round back on them, uh, finned at the top. So I got one of them on the uh, on the Chev. Always want one. I reckon they look really cool. So I got that on the Chev, and just for the time being, I've got this one uh, for the Studebaker that's sitting a lot higher a lot closer to the to the top of the or the underside of the hood um, before with the two barrel on it it was sitting down here a little bit I've got to try and get this camera right so that you can see the difference but yeah it's um you know with all the spaces and stuff like that the air cleaner sits a lot higher so it makes the motor look a lot bigger than it is But yeah, it makes a difference when all the heater hoses and everything come off the engine, cleans it right up. There'll have to be some hoses eventually put back on, simply because um, the LPG requires it. You need uh, a hose running in and a hose running out of the uh, converter uh, to, to, to warm it, to warm the gas, to liquefy it again. So... Um, yeah, but it won't have half as many hoses as this had on it. On this particular uh, Ford Carby, the, um, especially on a lot of the F trucks, F100s, F150s, F250s, um, they had a water inlet in through the, um, the, the base mount of the Carby um, to pre-warm the carburetor. Uh, on all the sedans, um, Ford sedans that were powered by a 302 or 351, they didn't all have this. Um, it didn't run in through through this um, this base. Um, I think they just solely relied on those um, heat exchange tubes that ran off the um, off the manifold for the automatic choke, and that was about it. Um, but the, yeah, for some reason the F trucks ended up getting this base on it with the heater hoses running in, circulating the water through the base of the carby and then back out again. So yeah, a few less hoses that I gotta put back onto the engine, which is gonna be nice. In all honesty, I don't know how to um, plumb any of this up. Um, so it's, it's been a long, long, long time since I um, since I built a motor. Uh, 20 years since I last rebuilt a motor. So I'm going to be relying a lot on the Chev and a lot on my Ford Coupe to see where some, you know, where particular hoses go. You know, uh, you know what goes into the vacuum tree, what goes from the carburetor into whatever. Um, 
you know, because this is on the LPG, do I really, I think they call this an EG, EGC valve? Emissions, or ECG, emissions control valve or something. Whether I need to actually run this anymore, I, I don't know. Usually with LPG, you don't need to run pollution gear. So I might have to take this off and um, just make a plate up to go, to bolt in across the back there to block that off. I don't really know. I'm gonna have to speak to some people about it and see whether I need to keep it or I don't. Um, you know, as I said, I'm just a, a backyard guy. I tinker with stuff. I don't know a lot about stuff, but I, I give everything a go and um, try and read a lot of books and see if I can learn anything out of books and magazines and just ask questions and, and piece it together, you know. But uh, you know, for someone that don't know a lot, I don't think I've done too bad so far. It's my, my second big project in 20 years um, a lot different to the chev because you know the chev was um, an unfinished project uh, wasn't even close to being finished at all I'll give you a bit of a sneak peek um, wasn't close to being finished by any any stage um, you know a couple of sections of the chassis had been boxed and a little bit of stealing out had been done of the body but um, that was about it. It's, it's a little dusty. It's been sitting around in the garage for a couple of months now. But you know, that's my baby. You know, she's she's quite elegant. You know, I didn't want to build it super modern. And this was a car that was built 20 years ago, or I started building it 20 years ago. 1993 I started it, and I had it registered on the road in 1998. Um, it didn't have those wheels on it at the time of registration, so that was something that I ended up buying probably, I don't know, a year to 18 months later. Um, the roof, I've only had that finished in recent times. I started building the fiberglass, um, roof itself about four years ago and because of other things that I had on on my plate never sort of got around to getting it trimmed I had I had all the glass finished I had a majority of the um, aluminium framework done inside it's all supported but it's not just glass it's all you can't see it it's way too dark but um, the entire roof is all framed out with aluminium so it's got a sub-skeleton uh, framework in there. And um, yeah, about two years ago, I could actually afford to get the roof trimmed. So, you know, I, I did that and got that trimmed and you won't be able to see it either, I don't think. But the shifter that I had in it when I got it registered was out of a uh, Holden Commodore GM model vehicle here in Australia, um, which is what the rack and pinion came out of that's in the Studebaker. Um, it was a three a three speed shifter, which I just, I cut the, the selector gate off it and tried to modify it to suit the two speed power glide, but it never really worked properly. Ended up finding this um, Hurst ratchet shifter on eBay. Uh, I think I got it for about $112 with the cable, which was a, a bargain, uh, and that went in. So yeah, I'm just doing little bits and pieces to it, um, still to this day, you know. It'll probably never be finished, but, um, you know, I'm sort of glad that it's never finished because every little thing I do sort of updates it a little bit and keeps it modern. You know, it's just a, a, a leaf spring rear end and it's a independent coil front end. You know, there's no airbags in this, no, no modern stuff. It's very straightforward, very simple street ride. Um, still got the hinge bonnet, which I hate, but um, you know, I've got um, a nice stainless steel 
hood support bracket system underneath it so when I, I do lift the uh, the hood or the bonnet whatever you want to call it everybody refers to it as as one or the other um, yeah I can I can just place the hood down into those those brackets I don't have to lay it completely over um, which just causes paint chipping and stuff so yeah that's that's my baby that's the Carter uh, thermo quad that I took off the the manifold that's now on the Studebaker they were um they were a work of art when they came out uh, just the amount of hoses that came off it for pollution gear was incredible uh, huge carburetor you know not all that great a performance carburetor but um, you know the thermo quads serve their purpose for their time and uh, this one did this this was actually fully rebuilt a couple of years before I took the car off the road um, I'm gonna stick this on eBay and try and sell it I know it works I know it doesn't leak so whoever buys it is gonna get a a good carby um, I just got no I got no use for it anymore so um, cockatoos <laughs> it's not rain in my videos that you can hear coming down or my mobile phone going off it's cockatoos or people drag racing uh, behind my property um, or the garage door slamming there's always something <laughs> so yeah that's that's my uh, my carter Eventually when I get to the point of wanting to start um, the truck up or have a running engine in it, I am going to try and start this old girl. There's no reason it shouldn't start. It was running when the guy pulled it out of his F truck. Um, you know, everything seems to be okay when I had the intake manifold off before, you know, I just I checked all the... Um, all the push rods and stuff like that and they all seemed pretty good there was no bent rods in there or anything so um, you know the motor turns over turn it over by hand so it's not seized uh, I've got a few things I've got to get for it you know I'd need a, a new insert here it goes into the block that's all rusted away um, I'd say I'd have to pull the uh, thermostat out you know it's just pretty rusty in there so yeah, it just needs it needs a general clean up. Um, I've got to stuff around with these pulleys. I think on the F trucks they had for some reason bigger pulleys. God knows why, because they ran the same air con and uh, pretty much the same alternator as any V8 sedan. But yeah, this seems to be bigger, and this one, which came off my '79 um, Fairmont wagon, is actually hitting the pulley. So um, I've got a, I think I've got a, I have got another set in my shed, my parts shed, and I, by looking at it by eye, I do believe that it is smaller than this set up here. So I'll just, um, you know, when it's time to take the motor back out again, that's when I'll replace all these bits and pieces and, um, you know, get it, get it ready for running. You know, I'll. Um, I'll uh, weld up these these little uh, holes for the heat that where the heat rise tubes came out. I will weld them up so we're not leaking um, any exhaust fumes through there. Yeah, just bits and pieces, bits and pieces. Don't know what the distributors like. I've been pricing up some electronic electronic ones on eBay um, and with all the coil pack on top HEI ones I think they call them um, pretty reasonable um, there's a supplier in Queensland that obviously imports them they're all billet 
billet aluminium um, bodies. I believe from some videos that I saw on YouTube, guys showing showing how to actually install them. They were saying that pretty much from here down is all forward uh, to suit the, um, you know, obviously to suit the um, the oil pump, and from there up on the the. HEI systems, they're basically General Motors, so they're a Chevy. Um, I can get a straightforward um, electronic dizzy, but I still have to run an external coil, um, both the same price. So, you know, if I can do away with having to bolt a coil to the front of the motor, I might, might go with the uh, HEI distributor. I haven't heard any bad reviews about them. I would say that they're made in Asia somewhere, uh, China or Taiwan, but they are billet aluminium, so, um, you know, the body's, the, the, the body on them's gonna be okay. Uh, just comes down to the electron, electronics inside, but I suppose any electronics can go on anything. Um, you know, parts are readily available for them, so, you know, if I have an issue, uh, I can get parts for it. Might be worth looking into. Be a lot more expensive to get this original uh, points distributor rebuilt. I remember getting the one rebuilt on my 76 Ford XB Coupe done. I simply did that because I wanted to keep it original. But, I think for um, probably reliability and um, less maintenance in having to replace points and stuff like that. I think I might go with electronic one on this. Uh, this uh, this will be a daily driver, so you know, um, you know I don't want to be changing points. You know, every time I do a tune up. Okay, I thought I'd just pop the top off this distributor, just take the cap off. I, to be honest, since I've had this motor, I've never taken the cap off it. I have no idea what it's like inside. Uh, to be honest, the body looks pretty clean on it. Like, I think the guy that owned it, for some reason, had done some work on the motor. Not as in, uh, you know, souping it up, like, the high performance or anything but I think just um, you know I think it had a new water pump put on it and I think something was done with the distributor and there was just things that indicated that things had been done to it the flex wheel that was on the back of it was brand new um, and I know that the engine had been painted at one stage because that new flex wheel had a little bit of overspray on it so um, yeah, it's, I, you know, maybe the distributor's good. It could be good, but I've never, I've never actually had the top off it. So here we go. We see it together for the first time. <laughs> Little bit of dust in there. Okay. Um, doesn't seem like an excessive lot of wear in there. A couple of black marks, black marks on the contact points of the cap. Um, That's the inside of it, very dusty. There we go. Well, it looks like the end of that's not too bad. It's still very clean. Um, yeah, it's nice and tight. That's good, you know? There's no slop in that. A little bit of upward play, there's meant to be anyway. But, um, yeah, that's solid. Hopefully, Hopefully that's okay. Well, points aren't stuck. It doesn't I can see it. I don't know if you can on the camera, but it doesn't look like there's been a lot of arcing or anything there. So obviously the um, the gap on the points was set right. I wasn't having any major electrical issues. Um, so we might be in with a chance here. Um, 
And cap looks all right inside there too, where the spark plug leads go in. And they don't seem to be corroded. They're just dusty, they're not corroded. Um, so the cap might even clean up all right too. If not, I've got a spare cap um, in my parts cupboard over there. But that'll be good, you know. Budget build, don't want to spend what I don't have to spend. Get it on the road as cheap as possible. And like with the Chev, you know, just dabble with it over the years. You know, improve little bits here and there. You now once the engine's all sprayed up and um, you know, everything's everything's working, uh, you now it's gonna look clean, it's gonna look neat. I'll try and hide as much stuff as I can, especially with the LPG system. Um, you know, there's the hose that comes off here. You know, I'll try and run that all neatly down here, and then down the back of the rocket cover, and try and mount the converter in under here somewhere so it, you totally don't see it. Um, the other place I could hide it is you'd run the hose down the front here, and because I'm taking the um, the fuel pump out with it running on LPG, I can always mount the converter down here in the front. Um, so I've got a couple of options there. And when you don't see the converter and you look at the engine, it just looks like a normal a normal carby sitting on top of that manifold. You know, and it's only when you get right up underneath it that you know that it's you know, a gas carby. The only evidence is going to be that that one main pipe. And, uh, but you know, it is what it is. It's an, it'll be an LPG engine, so you, you know, that you will see a pipe. Don't know what I referred to that earlier on as in the, uh, in the, the footage, but, um, EGR valve maybe <laughs> I got no idea um, you guys will know what it is um, particularly I don't care all I need to know is whether I need to use it or I don't so um, ERG EGA CG EGC whatever it is um, you know what I'm talking about so have a bit of a laugh and <laughs> tell me I don't know what I'm talking about because I don't um, yeah. It's all about having fun, I guess. Building it, learning. Um, yeah.